Welcome to Hill War Stories. In this episode, I'll be discussing the Primera Flats. The Primera Flats are a Mexican-American gang located in Los Angeles, California. Since the Pueblo days in LA, the Flats has always been a pocket of poverty. It was the lowland slum between Boyle Heights and LA River. It attracted poor immigrants as the land flooded frequently. The city of Los Angeles decided to raise the entire flat section and build one of the largest public housing projects in the city. The projects of Aliso Village and Pico Gardens occupied the former Russian Flats area and shortly thereafter became the headquarters for several gangs, including the Primera Flats. The Primera Flats are among the oldest gangs in Los Angeles, dating back to the Russian community that occupied the flats during the early 1900s. Primera means first in Spanish, which stood for First Street in Ball Heights. Their projects were situated on First Street and Mission Road. By the 80s, the Liso Village projects were plagued by drugs and crime. During that time, the Liso Village and Pico Gardens were among the city's most violent housing projects, if not the worst. It also had the highest concentration of gang activity. During the mid 80s, there were eight different gangs fighting for territory in those projects, which spanned a two mile radius. This means that in an area smaller than the UCLA campus, there were eight separate armies of youth, each equipped with small and large caliber weapons each of which may be at war with one or more of the others at any given moment. The Primera Flats, East Coast Crips, TMC, Quattro Flats, East LA Dukes, and Al Capone, at that time hovered in size from 50 to 80 members, and the Clarence Street locals were the largest, close to 90 members. However large the membership, the territory that each gang claimed was minuscule, no more than a block or two. A member of one gang, couldn't safely walk the half block from his mother's apartment to the corner store if that store is in enemy territory, much less walk the five or 10 blocks to reach his assigned high school. During the mid to late 80s, the Primera Flats went to war with the East Coast Crips for control over their project's drug trade. At that time, the East Coast Crips controlled many patios, stores on First Street, and the middle of the projects. The Primera Flats had a corner of the projects near Mission East Way. And the East LA Dukes had their corner over at the opposite end from the Flats, next to Utah Elementary School. When the war between the Primera Flats and East Coast Crips kicked off, Nally shootouts became a regular occurrence. On February 9th, 1989, at around midnight, six Latino gang members approached a group of black youth that were talking outside of an apartment on a 200 block of Paseo Rio. Two of the men then opened fire from about 100 feet away, killing two and wounding four. Witnesses said that one of the guns used appeared to be an AR-15. The assailants shouted out flats as they fled. In September of 1990, a clown from the Primera Flats was shot down by an East Coast Crip. In retaliation, Looney from East Coast was murdered as payback for clown. The night after Looney was killed, two Latinos, one a cook, one a base head, were murdered. After a brief departure from the Liso Village projects, the Primera Flats returned as law enforcement, city officials, and the housing authority began ridding the East Coast Crips from the projects. The Primera Flats also went to war with Al Capone. Al Capone was ultimately forced to relocate to the city of Covina in the San Gabriel Valley. The East LA Dukes migrated up the hill and TMZ set up shop in close proximity from 1st to 3rd Street. The AV fellas and rascals faded away. Many of them were absorbed into the Primera Flats or the East LA Dukes. Let's fast forward into the next decade. The Premier Flats and Quattro Flats gang were allies in the past, but by early 2005, the alliance had failed and they became rivals. The rivalry between the two gangs was heated and by 2010, it was an active gang war. During this period, there were shootings, crossed out graffiti and other demonstrations of the rivalry. Rivalries between gangs became apparent when graffiti was crossed out or disrespectful names were written over it. For example, Quattro Flats gang members were disrespectfully called cornflakes, which was derived from the C and the F in Quattro Flats. Premier Flats gang members were disrespected by the name Papas Fritas, which means French fries in Spanish, or Papas. Any member of the Quattro Flats gang who wanted to go elsewhere, such as the Homeboys Industry Office, would not be likely to travel through Premier Flats territory, but would take a safer, alternative route. But on the afternoon of December 23rd, 2010, after visiting a friend, Jonathan went to a nearby bus stop on his way home. The bus stop was located next to a church school and parking lot near Cesar Chavez and Bridge Street. 
This bus stop was located in Premier Flats territory. About 30 minutes prior, Jimmy unexpectedly ran into Felix at a restaurant. Jimmy and Felix were both members of the Quattro Flats gang. Jimmy asked Felix for a ride to his house, but Felix said he could not take him that way because he had a job interview at Homeboy Industries. Jimmy then suggested a bus stop at Cesar Chavez in Pennsylvania Avenue, although he knew it to be Premier Flats territory. To get to the restaurant from his home, Jimmy had taken a different bus with a closer stop to the restaurant, but he suggested the stop in the Premier Flats territory because he was tired and wanted to take the express bus home and because he was familiar with the neighborhood from the time his mother had lived there. They then spotted Jonathan at the bus stop as they were approaching. Jimmy was armed for protection because members of the Premier Flats had previously shot at him. Jimmy then hopped out of the white van and walked toward Jonathan with the gun held in one hand at his side. Jimmy first walked about four feet away from the van. When Jimmy came within seven to eight feet of Jonathan, he took the gun into both hands as he continued to move forward. He then fired one shot after another at Jonathan. Jonathan raised his hands in a defensive position and looked shocked, but did not move from his position. During the shooting, the white van driven by Felix remained in the same location on Cesar Chavez and Bridge Street. But when the shooting stopped, the van began moving slowly west on Cesar Chavez. By that time, two LAPD officers arrived on scene in their patrol car. The driver of the van looked in the officer's direction with a surprised look and then started moving forward slowly. Looking alternatively at the officers and at Jimmy, who was then running after the van. As the two officers watched, Jimmy tried to unsuccessfully open the door of the van as it accelerated. Felix took off, made a right, then sped off. While the two officers pursued Jimmy who fled on foot to a nearby parking lot, where he threw his gun up on a roof. The officers took Jimmy into custody. In the meantime, other officers quickly located the van, then saw Felix running down an embankment next to the freeway. As Felix ran through traffic across the transition lanes of the freeway, and then across the freeway to the opposite shoulder, where he was taken into custody. Jonathan had been shot 11 times from a distance of more than two feet. One fatal bullet passed through both lungs, his windpipe, and esophagus. Jimmy and Felix from Quattro Flats were ultimately convicted of first-degree murder. Even after the Pico Lizo housing projects were demolished, the Premier Flats and the mob crew continued to go at it. Part of this reason was that they were still in very close proximity to each other. The mob crew was able to establish turf right next to their original territory, while the Premier Flats were adjacent to the mob crew and bordered between three freeways. On August 21st, 2016, at around 8.25 p.m., Christopher, who was from the mob crew, was standing near the corner of First and Glass Street in Boyle Heights. This area was at the border of territory claimed by the two gangs. Fresh Premier Flats graffiti had been spray painted at a nearby building. There was also old TMC graffiti nearby. At approximately 8.30 p.m., a white van with black rims drove down Glass Street. Ten seconds later, bullets fly as two 9mm handguns began firing at Christopher. He was struck eight times. Christopher was transported to the hospital, where he underwent surgery. However, he succumbed to his injuries. Freddie lived about a half a mile away from the shooting site. Nine days after the shooting, an officer observed a white van with black rims parked near his residence. Officers then observed Freddy driving the van on August 30th and again on September 16th and impounded it on a later date on September 29th, 2016. Six cell phones and a paper tattoo stencil that spelled Premier Flats were found in the search. One of the phones registered to Freddy contained a variety of text messages. One sent the day before the killing from Freddy to someone known as Twigs. Freddy had asked Twigs to get the 9mm bullets ready. Cell tower records also showed that on the night of the shooting, Freddy's phone did not send or receive any calls or texts between 7.40 up until 8.50 p.m. This was consistent with the phone being turned off, but could also indicate that it was simply not used. After the murder, there was fresh graffiti near the shooting site that read, Retaliation is a must. Buck Flats, 187. The jury ultimately convicted Freddy of possession of a firearm by a felon which acquitted Freddie of the murder. He was sentenced to 14 years in prison and imposed a restitution fine. Before the West Side Premier Flats came into being, they were originally called Barrio 23rd Street. 
Barrio 23rd Street is located in the Low Bottoms area on the east side of South Central Los Angeles. During the early 80s, Barrio 23rd Street merged and became the West Side Premier Flats. The heart of their barrio is 23rd and Wall, and their headquarters is Trinity Park. The West Side Premier Flats' main rival is the Ghetto Boys, who are located directly south of them. 28th and Maple is considered the heart of their barrio. On August 6, 1999, at around 9.30 p.m., FT, who was from Premier Flats, was conjugated by one of his twin sisters, neighbors, and other gang members in front of the yard. Francisco and Alberto, also known as Gremlin from the Ghetto Boys, drove by on 22nd Street in a beige Ford Astro van. Shortly thereafter, Francisco and Alberto drove by again, this time driving a green car. About 10 to 15 minutes later, Alberto and Francisco drove down Adair Street, this time driving a white sedan. The Ghetto Boys sedan then slowed. Alberto put his torso out the front passenger window, aimed his 9mm handgun, and began firing at the crowd of youth. FT pushed his eight-year-old neighbor SP to the ground. However, when Alberto started shooting at FT, FT stood up to run. From eyebrow to ear, fatally wounding him. As the sedan sped off, Francisco yelled out, Fuck flats, ghetto boys. After the shooting, police found nearly a dozen shell cases in the street. Several months later, upon Alberto's arrest, the police discovered a beige Astro van parked at his residence. The van was registered to his brother. Francisco and Alberto, from Ghetto Boys, were ultimately convicted of first-degree murder. They were each sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Since 1997, the Premier Flats and the Ghetto Boys had been engaged in a turf war over a park, which had resulted in a number of shootings and killings. Trinity Park is the backdrop in which the fierce rivalry between the Premier Flats and the Ghetto Boys is often acted out. Trinity Park is bordered by 23rd to 25th Street between Wall and Trinity Street. This location is significant because the park is situated in between each gang's territory, prompting a turf war for control over the park. The West Side Premier Flats are extremely territorial over Trinity Park. For the vast majority of gangs, territory is highly important. It's essential to maintain control over a territory in order to have a safe zone from rivals to control the narcotic sales in the territory and to conduct business however they see fit. The Ghetto Boys often diss the Premier Flats by calling them Papa's Fritas, while the Premier Flats disrespect the Ghetto Boys by calling them Gummy Bears. In the late afternoon on April 11th, 2002, Paul and Bobby were sitting on a bench in Trinity Park, hanging out with Bobby's girlfriend and her three-year-old son, when they were approached by a group of Hispanic males, including Samuel, also known as Smiley. Bobby recognized Samuel and his friends as members of the Premier Flats gang. Bobby was concerned because his brother Paul was a member of the Ghetto Boys. Samuel then walked by and said, It better not be no gummy bears in this bitch. They're not supposed to be in this park. We're not having that shit. Paul felt the reference to be disrespectful because Samuel knew Paul was a member of the Ghetto Boys. Paul also believed Samuel had a gun in his pocket. Since an impossible violent confrontation, Bobby told his brother not to say anything. Bobby then stood up in front of Paul and told Samuel, Nobody's from nowhere. Samuel and his friends then left. Later that evening, Paul was playing basketball in the Trinity Park gym when two hooded men entered the gym. Paul recognized these two men as Samuel and a man named Jose, also known as Dreamer. Paul's attention was immediately drawn to Jose, who was holding a shotgun. In an effort to escape, Paul ran outside through an opposing set of doors. Shots rang out as Paul fled the gym as he ran toward the shelter of his aunt's house. While Paul was playing basketball in the gym, Mario, Bobby, Oliveira, and her child sat on a bench outside the gym. Mario was also a member of the Ghetto Boys. Suddenly, Paul ran outside from the gym, yelling at Mario to watch out. Mario then saw the two shooters emerge from the gym. Mario got a clear view of Samuel as he came out the door. Upon hearing Paul's warning, Samuel pointed his gun at Mario, who ran in the same direction as Paul. Samuel fired approximately four to seven shots at Mario as Mario fled away. As Samuel was firing at Mario, Oliveira was frantically looking for her child. She spied him underneath Samuel's gun. Alarmed, Oliveira pushed Samuel, causing his hood to fall off, revealing his identity. Samuel then turned and ran. Meanwhile, Paul was running from Jose. As Paul ran, he crossed paths with Anthony, who was an eight-year-old boy playing a game in the park with his cousins. Both Samuel and Jose shot in the direction of the children. 
Anthony was caught in a crossfire and died from a gunshot wound to the chest. Samuel and Jose, from the Premier Flats, were ultimately convicted of first degree murder, attempted murder, and conspiracy to commit murder. They were each sentenced to 100 years to life. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.